planning a piano recital, a music recital, it shouldn't be so hard, right? Look, after just shy of a decade of planning in-person and online piano recitals, I've really learned how to streamline this process so that there is a lot less stress, um, I can actually be creative in how I approach it, and I'm not spending tons of admin time to put on this studio event. I'm going to be sharing some tips with you, my best tips, in terms of how to organize and market your next music or piano recital, all without overloading your admin time, because I don't know about you, but that used to be the big thing that held me up every time. This is part one, so don't worry, we're only starting with the first part, and then in the rest of this series, I'm going to be sharing steps and tips all along the way so that this next event, it's a lot easier on you. If we haven't met before, I'm Rosemary Penner, and I want it all. I want balance in juggling work life in my studio with family life, with twins. And I also want to still have the time and energy to be creative in my teaching and how I run my businesses. The Unfinished Lesson started as my way of helping other independent music teachers and studio owners be able to get some balance in their life and creativity in their studios. Because guess what? You can have it all. Be sure to watch to the end of this video. I'm going to be sharing a free resource that's going to help you take the tips that I'm sharing here and really apply them into your studios at an even deeper level. Idea one. Get your ducks in a row. In other words, figure out the big stuff. Recitals are more than just where's the recital venue, the time, and the date, right? We've all been there. It's a massive amount of things to figure out. So this is where we need to start. We need to kind of look at the big picture. Um, whether you're doing online or in person, I'm going to say actually don't discount virtual or online recitals. Now hear me out. There has always been a need and a desire for people to experience music when they can't be there live. This is how we got radio. This is how we got, you know, cassette tapes and CDs and all sorts of stuff. And I think it's sometimes hard for us to remember that. If you're wanting something where you don't have to do a lot the day of, Virtual or online is fantastic. If I have to choose between the two, in-person was like a full day thing and I was exhausted and just sitting on the couch and the rest of my guys had to figure out what was happening for dinner and what was going on the rest of the day because I was tired. Online, I finish up, I hit the stop button, I close down my computer and stuff and I go on with the rest of my day way less energy on me, way less on my entire family, actually. Um, that whole day thing, it wasn't just me who was having to do stuff in person. It was my family as well. I was like a drill sergeant. Okay, you are taking care of this. You're taking care of this. You're taking care of this. As soon as it's done, come get me. I've got my checklist. I will let you know the next step. Um, so just don't discount it. Okay, but if you decide to do in person, that's great too. Don't worry, all these tips will work for you. So if you're thinking, actually that sounds really good, I want to do online, there's a few options. Okay, you can do an on-demand or live streaming, meaning that you're kind of prepping things beforehand, and then in the moment, there's not a lot you have to do. You could do a watch party or something that's interactive. What I guess I want to help you understand is it's up to you. You can, again, use these ideas in person. So if you're doing an in-person recital, how involved do you want to be at the event? I used to be super involved. I remember one year I ended up tripping down the stairs as I went to the stage, so I was doing my spiel at the beginning with my skinned knee. <laughs> um, you know, I was very involved when it was in person. How much prep do you want beforehand? If you're doing an online version, 
you might have more prep beforehand. But like I said, you hit the stop button and you're done, right? There's, there's not a lot you have to do. Decide what's important to you. This is gonna affect every decision you make after this, those two questions, okay? How involved do you wanna be day of at the event? And how much prep do you wanna to have to do beforehand? Because depending on how you answer, then some things are just not gonna work for you. You're not gonna be happy. And other things are gonna be a perfect fit. All right, so we've covered this. Kind of look at the big picture, see what's gonna fit really well for you and also your studio. Idea two, give yourself time. Look, Murphy's Law is going to happen. Happens every year, again, online, in-person, does not matter. I remember for one of our in-person lessons, one of the parents all of a sudden came up to me less than five minutes before we were supposed to start and went, so I just found out that my kid didn't bring their music, has completely blanked on it, and I need to go drive there and then drive back. By the way, that's gonna take me about 20 minutes and he's second on the program. What do we do? Now, he had my only copy of the music. I can hear some of the teachers saying you should always have two copies. I know, I know. Um, but yeah, so we rejigged the recital program. I was like, okay, go, don't get a speeding ticket. He'll perform once you get back. It's fine. Um, so Murphy's Law is going to happen. And whether it happens to us or whether it happens to our clients or students, it's fine. The first year that I did an online recital, um, because I knew Murphy's Law and how much it loves technology, I had actually three black backup plans. I kid you not, okay? It was, this is our plan, this is the next one, and if that goes wrong, this is what's happening, and then this is what's happening. Thankfully, I didn't need to use any of them. But because my clients knew I had backup plans on backup plans on backup plans, they were actually a lot more confident going into that online recital because I had done the worrying for them. I said, look, if the internet goes down, I've got it covered. If all of a sudden your internet goes down but the recital's going on, I've got it covered. Don't worry about a thing. This is fantastic. Now, whether it's online or whether you're trying something new. So in person, you know, we did new things for our in-person recitals as well. Anytime that there's an element of something new, our clients and students are gonna feel a little unsure. Some are super adventurous, they're like, bring it on, but the majority are gonna be pretty nervous about this. And so you having a plan and giving yourself time to test those things out means you're giving them the confidence that it's gonna be fine. They can have fun, they can relax, and anything that goes wrong, you've already figured out how to deal with it. Um, it's way easier when you're able to move from one plan to the next versus everyone staring at you and you have to come up with something on the fly. Um, I've done it before, it's not fun, and looking back in those situations, more often than not, I would have chosen a different course of action. It worked out, but it wasn't the best course of action and I could have done with a lot less stress in my life in that moment. In terms of, uh, you know, starting ahead of time and giving yourself time, test things out. So again, that first year that I did an online recital, I talked to my husband and my kids and I said, we're having a recital testing session. What I want you to do is try and break Zoom. I didn't actually want them to break Zoom. Zoom, if you're listening, I didn't actually want them to break you. Um, but I wanted them to press all the different buttons. I wanted them to basically embrace their inner toddler and whatever my students could have done, it already happened in that testing session. And we just kept it fun and light. Now, granted, we learned we couldn't do that testing all in the same household. There was a lot of feedback, um, but 
you know what, that was something good for me to tell my clients. If you are going to be watching on separate devices, you need to be as far apart from each other as possible. And whoever's not performing, their sound is off. So that was a good thing for me to learn, right? It was a good thing for me to understand and tell my clients so that they didn't get that horrible feedback loop, which wouldn't have made things as um, fun well, and frankly as enjoyable as, enjoyable as it could have been. Um, and if there's going to be grandparents attending and it's a new format, again, in person or online, just make sure that you have some stuff set up so that it guides them through the process a little bit more, especially if there's an element of technology in it. All right, idea number three. I want you to tease out those details. I get excited about stuff and then I just really want to share all of it. But that's not always the best thing. And so I've learned that I need to tease it out a little. Um, you know, send to save the date before sending the invitation. Why would we do that? Okay, well, one, it's actually a really good idea from weddings. Basically what it does is they set aside the date. You know what date the recital is happening, what time it's happening but you might not know all the details yet because of that testing, because you're figuring things out. That's okay. You can make sure that your clients can show up when you want them to show up because it's in their calendar well before, but it gives you that buffer, that time to be able to test things out before you've actually committed to them. So um, again, my first online recital, I kind of went in blind. <laughs> I had no clue what was going to work. I had these really big plans. Um, and so I'm glad that I didn't tell my clients, okay, this, 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 this is going to happen. Because guess what? It was super overwhelming. I ended up throwing out most of those ideas and went, I'll get to them another year. <laughs> um, but they weren't disappointed because the experience was less than what they thought it was going to be. So tease it out, right? Give them details, the ones that they need, but then don't overwhelm them. It's also the other part of it is if you give all the details to your clients and your students, you may overwhelm them with, oh my goodness, there's a crazy amount that's going to be happening. I don't know if I can handle being a part of it. We don't want to do that. We want to avoid that at all costs. So, you know, you can do things like let them know whether they can invite guests and how they're going to let you know. So I used to have it that, you know, when it was in person, it didn't really matter too much. About a week before I said, hey, so who's coming to the recital? I just need numbers from you so that refreshments, I have enough for everyone. For online, I wanted to make sure that the security was there and I wasn't letting just anyone in. Um, I wasn't just sending the link to whoever, and I didn't want my clients to do that either. So, um, you know, I handled it differently at first. This year, which has been so much easier, I created a um, image that I sent my clients, and in that email, the image had a link to a Zoom registration for our Zoom recital. It's been fantastic super fantastic. My clients know that they can forward that email to whatever family members they're hoping will attend and I don't have to chase after them for this. They just register for the Zoom meeting which after you know a few years of this everyone's used to it. Almost everyone's used to it and uh, yeah then I know the people who are invited I'm not chasing details right. I already have their email. I can already send everything I need to. Um, encourage students and clients to ask questions along the way. No matter how much we test things out, no matter how much we work at sharing that information in a way that's not overwhelming, they're going to have questions. That's normal. That's okay. I don't get mad about it. I don't get upset or frustrated. I just make sure I ask or answer them. And if I notice that more than one family is asking the same question, I make sure that I send something out to the studio and say, hey, I'm getting questions about this. I just wanted to clarify or 
I thought you might have the same question. Here's the answer. Makes my life easier. I'm not repeating myself a million times. And they get full support all along the way. Again, especially if you're trying something new um, or changing things up a little bit, there's going to be questions. And then lastly, just make sure that you share on social media. Really get excited about it in lessons. As we're teasing it out, I kind of try and think of it as like a movie trailer where they want to share just enough that you know what's happening-ish. Um, you know when it's coming out and you're just really excited about seeing the movie. That's kind of what we want to do here. They don't need to know all the details. They just need to know enough to get there on time to know what needs to happen on their side of things and that they're really excited about sharing their music with other people. As promised, here is a resource I'm going to share, a free resource that's going to help you take the tips from this video and get your next studio uh, recital organized and even start marketing it. And it's how to market a virtual recital that will knock your client's socks off. So as I've said probably a million times in this video, I know it says virtual recital. You can take these tips and use them in an online recital. The reason that my virtual recitals have been a success is because I took the tips and tricks that I'd learned from doing in-person recitals and applied them to the new format. So just keep that in mind. Definitely be sure to read it. It'll be a really great opportunity to kind of think about what is the best recital format for you? Um, what's going to be the least amount of stress and admin time for you? And then just choose the one that works best for you because in person online, honestly, there is no perfect answer. It's whatever works for you in your studio. Okay. All right. You're not going to want to miss out on this new series. It's all about recitals and recital prep, both from the admin side and also from the student side. Be sure to click that subscribe button so that you let or so that it lets you know when the next video is out. Looking forward to seeing you then.